hello guys so uh, we are going to cover up the first chapter of our uh, channel for learn iPhone application development from scratch so today we will learn about basic introduction to the iOS application development and in which we will go through uh, what are the required things we need for starting the application development from scratch so uh, we'll go through each basic details prerequisites which are basic requirements minimal requirements uh, to start working for the iPhone application development so uh, let's check out the things so here are three things we do have as a prerequisites for starting application development even if we are aware about the technologies and tools about the different technologies uh, we need to go through whenever we are switching to the new, te new technologies we will have to go through the environments we will have to go through the tools which are going to use which are going to uh, also the languages which are going to use so that will help us to um, uh, further further development and more faster development so for the iPhone application development we do have a three basic requirement things so first of all uh, the first requirement is Apple Mac system we do need to get the Apple Mac system anyhow uh, then only we will be able to start working on the application development because uh, other than that we will not be able to install the supported tools uh, which are going to use for uh, developing native iOS applications so the system can be anything macbook pro air mac mini or imac uh, whoever supporting the latest uh, mac os versions and uh, xcode versions uh, that will be enough for the development and uh, second thing will be the xcode uh, uh, whenever we are using the new system maybe there will be no uh, not any development tools uh, installed so in that case what we can do is we can go to the finder go to the applications so here you can see uh, there are lots of applications already get installed here so we, we can also find the xcode installed here but suppose if you have not installed xcode version you cannot find the xcode version in your system in applications that means you have to install it so you can do it from the app store click on the app store and you can simply search the Xcode. So this is a uh, free development tool they have provided us. Uh, in my case, I have already installed it, so it's giving me new update here. But if it's not installed, it will give you direct an option to install in your system. And when you are clicking on download some uh, download or uh, any call of action it will be directly installed into your application folder that you will know for the steps it can be quickly downloaded so let's say it's already installed in our system so we'll see what are the options available and how we can use xcode version and utilize it to further uh, developing the applications we'll see later on in uh, uh, in a later videos how to make a simple hello world application initially we will see what are the options available into the xcode version so let's open it first so here you can see uh, there are three options available basically welcome to xcode and there is a version available now below that there are three options available uh, first is for create new project let's say if we are creating application or project from scratch then we can choose this option uh, the application can be anything iPhone, app, uh, iPhone, iPad application, Mac application or we can be uh, able to develop the application for Apple TV or Apple Watch as well the second option is clone an existing project suppose we do have an application ready and it's uh, the code is already on a Bitbucket or Git repository then what we can do is we can uh, use a cloning option so what it will do is it will create an exam copy uh, in our system and that we can use for the further development or further updates uh, third option is open an existing project suppose we have already created a project and it's available into our system then we can directly open it from here only 
apart from that there are few of the options we which we should be aware about it uh, before we start the development so here you can see preferences from where we can go to the settings basic settings of the xcode version uh, in windows we are saying it settings in mac system we are saying it preferences so here are the few options which we can use first one is a general option in which uh, uh, some of the settings which we can use uh, like appearance uh, some of the personalization settings which we can also in account section we can set up our developer accounts uh, then behavior and navigation also we can use theme we can use for customizing our xcode version as per our needs uh, we can change the font styles background colors text colors all the things from here directly uh, these are the shortcuts available uh, which when we can use throughout the development and uh, next is components uh, so it's providing us some of the extra simulator options that we can use during the development let's say if we need to uh, test our application into the ios 14.2 simulator we can download the simulator and we can use uh, uh, while debugging the application or running the applications in simulator uh, the next option is locations so here three options it's showing uh, which are very important first one is derived data so derived data is nothing but it's a catch control whenever we are creating any project and compiling it it creates a catch folder of that project and whenever we are running it again it directly takes the uh, the catch values and uh, for the faster uh, faster running it uses this catch so we can even remove these catch values constantly if we have spacing issues in our mac it will automatically get created whenever we recompile, recompile the project. Then the second option is archives. What archives is doing is whenever we are creating any debug or release uh, release files, so that files will be stored into the archives. So that files also we can keep removing uh, whenever it's not in use uh, and we already done with our testing, we can uh, simply remove it from there. Then the third and last option is command line tools. So command line tools is nothing. It's showing the just uh, what are the latest command line tools available into the Xcode version. So currently we do have only one Xcode installed into our system. We can even uh, install our, uh, we can also manage the multiple Xcode versions. But in our case, we do have only one Xcode. So it's showing us this option. So these are the basic settings that we can use. Uh, in a next video, we will go through uh, creating a new project uh, a simple hello world application and also we will check what are the other environment options available into the xcode what are the settings available how we can configure our basic application what are the requirements we will have to uh, go through the design part and all the things that that stuff we will show into the next video mm. in the prerequisite if you can see uh, the last option is a simulator uh, simulator is nothing but uh, it's uh, basically a test uh, device uh, not, it's not a physical test device but it's a cre created it's a virtual test device that provides by the Xcode uh, itself so we can run our application and we can do some some of the basic testing into the simulator before we go to the live testing so we already have some of the basic simulator options available into the, our Xcode that we will see in our last, uh, last video, next video. So you will get more idea on that. So that's all uh, for this first video. In next video, we will go for the basic Hello World application and we will try to run that application in any of the simulator as well. So that's all for now.